encoders and decoders. I want you to understand how we use encoders and decoders when it comes to designing a particular digital system. For example, laptop. It has keyboard and there is a processor inside and it has display unit also. So whatever the input that you are going to provide through keyboard, basically the encoder is going to convert the input information into binary. And the processor is going to take this input information and it's going to process all the information in terms of binary, then it produces the output. The output is also going to be binary. And then the decoder is going to convert the output binary into, again, display format. So here, one thing you need to understand, the processor which is running inside the laptop is a digital component. It's a digital component and it can understand only the binary information. So what goes in and what comes out of the processor is always going to be binary. So that's why you need components like encoder and decoder. Here, if you look at this encoder, it might follow a particular code like ASCII. American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And this ASCII code defines particular value for each character. So when it comes to input, there will be different kinds of information like discrete information. Not only alphabets and numbers, there will be control values. For example, you want to control the display, you want to increase the brightness, there is a key. So the encoder has to produce equal and binary for that key. Then only the processor can understand. Then only it can go and control the display. The same thing when it comes to controlling the volume of the speaker, there are some buttons on the keyboard. When you press that particular key, it produces a pulse and that pulse goes to encoder and based on the ASCII code, it produces the equal and binary and based on the binary, the processor controls the volume, right? So this is how the digital system works. So here, if you look at, the encoder converts human understandable language into machine understandable language. And decoder is just opposite to that. It converts machine understandable language into human understandable language. But this is how we use encoders and decoders to design any kind of digital system. Now, let's look at each component encoder and decoder, how it works. Encoders, as I said, it converts human understandable language into machine understandable language. It assigns a binary code to an active input line. This is how fundamentally it works. So it acts like one hard to binary converter. If you look at the functionality, this is how it works. So functionality wise, what it does is, it produces n number of outputs when there is two to the power n number of inputs. It produces n number of outputs when there is two to the power n number of inputs. Let's look at four to two encoder. There are four inputs, two outputs. This is how the truth table would look like. At a time, only one input is going to be active high. So here, D0 is 1, so you get 0, 0. And D1 is 1, so you get 0, 1. And D2 is 1, so you get 1, 0. And D3 is 1, you get 1, 1. This is how it produces equivalent binary. Now let's look at decimal to binary encoder, how it works. There are 10 inputs and 4 outputs. So what you need is 10 to 4 encoder, 10 input keys, and 4-bit binary equivalent. That's what it's going to produce. For example, you press 1, so it produces equivalent binary 0, 0, 0, 1. You press 5, it produces equivalent binary 0, 1, 0, 1. You press 8, it produces equivalent binary 1, 0, 0, 0. So you can define two table like this. There are 10 inputs, four outputs. For each key, it's going to produce equivalent binary like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, 
zero 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 one like this it goes on now i would like to ask you some questions what if more than one input is active what would happen what if none of the inputs are going to be active look at these conditions that's where priority encoder comes into picture so how it works it assigns priorities to the inputs when more than one inputs are going to be active high it assigns priorities to the inputs the highest priority input will always be considered to produce the output and this is important at least any one of the input line should be active to make the encoder valid so there will be a valid output look at this example you have eight inputs three outputs one valid indicator if none of the inputs are going to be active high then the valid is valid output is going to be zero then based on the inputs you get the equivalent binary so here for d0 0 0 0 for d1 0 0 1 and this is how it shows the priority when d7 is going to be active high it's not going to consider any other inputs irrespective of other inputs it's always going to consider d7 because d7 has got the highest priority that's why for the other inputs i use don't care condition so the best example for encoder is ascii encoder whatever the key values you provide whatever the keys that you type Basically, it's going to produce the equivalent binary based on this ASCII table. ASCII defines the equivalent value. This code uses 7 bits to encode 128 unique characters. Now, actually, it's upgraded with 8 bits. So ASCII means American Standard Code for Information Interchange. If anyone wants to design encoder for the keyboard, basically, he has to follow ASCII standard. So based on ASCII, only the encoder is going to convert the input key into equivalent binary value. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.